I like the recording. Let me say got it. You want to say got it? Got it. Got, got it. it. Jim, you're so funny. <laughs> we got it going. Act 1, Scene 1. Yep. Enter Lucentio and his man Tranio. 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 Uh, Tranio. Act 1, it. Scene 1. Enter Lucentio and his man Tranio. I'm going to probably interrupt a lot of folks because there's a lot. No, of don't stuff. do that. Don't interrupt. Oh, I have to because no. I'm so spoiled with this play. But anyway, jump ahead. Do. Tranio. Act 1, Scene 1. Enter Lucentio and his man, Tranio. Tranio, since for the great desire I had to see fair Padua Nursery of Arts, I am arrived for fruitful Lombardy, the pleasant garden of great Italy, and by my father's love and leave, am armed with his good will and thy good company. My trusty servant will approve in all. Here, let us breathe and happily institute a course of learning and ingenious studies. Pisa, renowned for grave citizens, gave me my being and my father's first, a merchant of great traffic through the world. Vicencio, come of Ben Tivoli, Vicencio's son brought up in Florence, it shall become to serve all hopes conceived to deck his fortune with his virtuous deeds. And therefore, Tranio, for the time I study virtue and that part of philosophy, will I apply the treats of happiness by virtue specially to be achieved. Tell me thy mind, for I have Pisa left, and am to Padua come, as he that leaves a shallow plash to plunge him in the deep and with satiety seek to quench his thirst. Ah, uh, me, perdonato, gentle master mine, I am in all affected as yourself, glad that you thus continue your resolve to suck the sweet of sweet philosophy. Only, I give a master, while we do admire this virtue and this moral prince discipline, let be no stoics nor no stocks, I pray, or so devote to Aristotle's checks, as Ovid be an outcast quite abjured. Bach logic with acquaintance that you have, and practice rhetoric in your common talk. Music and poesy used to quicken you, the mathematics and the metaphysics. Fall to them as you find your stomach serves you. No profit grows where is no pleasure tan. In brief, sir, study what you most affect. A gramesisi, gramesi stranio, well dost thou advise. If Biendello, thou wert come ashore, we could at once put us in readiness and take a lodging fit to entertain such friends as time in Padua shall beget. But stay a while. What company is this? Oh, master, some show to welcome us to town. Gentlemen, importune me no further how I am resolved, you know, that is not to bestow my younger daughter before I have a husband for the elder. If either of you both love Katarina, uh, because I know you well and love you well, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. It's a hard her, rather. So she's too rough for me, and therefore, Hortensio, will you have any other? My wife? I pray you, sir, is it your will to make a stale of me amongst this mate? Mates, mate? How mean you that? No mates for you, unless you were a gentler, milder mold. In faith, sir, you shall never need to fear I was. It is not halfway to her heart, but if it were, doubt not her care should be to comb your noodle with a three-legged stool and paint your face and use your like a spool. Oh, from all such devils, good Lord, deliver us. And me too, good Lord. Ah, hush, master. Here's some good pastime toward that wench is stock mad or wonderful florid. 
But in the other silence do I see maids, mild behavior, and sobriety. Peace, Tranio. Well said, Master Mom, and gaze your fill. Gentlemen, that I may soon make good what I have said, Bianca, get you in, and let it not displease you, good Bianca, for I will love you ne'er to bless my girl. A pretty peat. It is best put finger in the eye, and she knew why. Sister, content you in my discontent. Sir, to your pleasure, humbly I subscribe. My books and instruments shall be my company, on them to look and practice by myself. Oh, hark, Tranio, thou mayest hear Minerva speak. Uh, Signor Baptista, will you be so strange? Sorry, I am that our good will affects Bianca's grief. Why will you mew her up, Signor Baptista, for this fiend of hell, and make her bear the penance of our tongues? <laughs> A gentleman, uh, content you. I am resolved. Go in, Bianca, <laughs> for I know that thee taketh most delight in uh, music, in instruments, in poetry, and uh, schoolmasters will I keep within my house to instruct her youth. If you, Hortensio, or Signor Garamio, if you know any such, Pray them hither. You know, um, uh, wait a minute, for, uh, prefer them hither, for they, for to cunning men, I will be very kind and liberal and make m mine own children to good bringing up. And so, farewell. Katharina, you may stay, uh, for I have more to commune with Bianca. <laughs> Why, and I, I trust I may go to, may I not? What? Shall I be appointed hours as though be like? I knew not what to take and what to leave. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> you may go to the devil's dam. Your gifts are no good. There's none that will hold you, and your love is not so great, uh, Hortensio, that we may blow our nails together and fast it fairly on their cakes dough on both sides. Oh, farewell yet for the love I bear my sweet Bianca. If I can find any means light on a man to teach her as wherein she delights, I will wish him here uh, thither to her father. Hmm, so will I, Signor Gremio. But a word, I pray. Though the nature of our quarrel yet never brooked, parley, know how, know now, upon advice, it touches us both, that we may yet again have access to our fair <coughs> mistress and be happy rivals in Bianco's love to labor and effect one thing, especially. And what's that, I pray? Mary, sir, to get a husband for her sister. A husband? <coughs> devil, I say. I say a husband. <laughs> I say a devil. <coughs> thou, Hortensio, that her father be very rich. Any man that be so very a fool to marry to hell. Oh, tush, Gremio. It would pass your patience and mine to endure her loud alarms. Why, man, there be good fellows in the world, and a man could light on them, would take her with all faults, and <laughs> money enough. Ah, <laughs> well, I cannot tell. But I had as leaf take her dowry with one condition, that to be whipped <clears throat> at the high cross every morning. Faith, as you say, there's small choice in rotten apples. But come, <laughs> since this bar in law makes us friends, it shall be so far forth friendly, maintained all by helping Baptista's eldest daughter to a husband. We set his youngest free for a husband, and then have to it afresh. Oh, sweet Bianca, happy man, 
be his dole. He thus runs fastest, gets the ring. How say you, Signor Gremio? I am agreed, and what I had given him the best horse in Padia to begin his wooing, that would be thoroughly to woo her, and to wed her, and bet her, and rid the house of her. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I, I pray you, so sir, tell me, is it possible that love should of a sudden take such hold? Oh, Tanya, till I found it to be true, I never thought it possible or likely. But see, while idly I stood looking on, I found the effect of love and idleness. And now in plainness do confess to thee that art to me as secret and as dear as Anna to the Queen of Carthage was. Tranio, I burn, I pine, I perish, Tranio, if I achieve not this young modest girl. Counsel me, Tranio, for I know thou canst. Assist me, Tranio, for I know thou wilt. Master, it is no time to chide you now. Affection is not raided from the heart. If love has touched you, not remains but so. Red time to captum quam quies minimo. Kratz, Gramercy's lad, go forward, this contents, the rest will comfort for thy counsel's sound. Master, you look so longingly on the maid, perhaps you mark not what the pith of all. Oh, yes, I saw sweet beauty in her face, such as the daughter of Aginor had, that made great Jove to humble him to her hand when with his knees he kissed the Cretan strand. Hmm, shall you no more? Marked you not how her sister began to scold and raise up such a storm that mortal's ears might hardly endure the din? Tranio, I saw her coral lips to move, and with her breath, she did perfume the air, sacred and sweet was all I saw in her. Oh, nay, then, tis time to stir him from his trance. I pray, it's, uh, if you love the maid, bend thoughts and wit to achieve her. Thus it stands, her eldest sister is so cursed and shrewd that till the father rids his hand of her, master, your love must live a maid at home. And therefore, has he closely mewed her up, because she will not be annoyed with suitors. Ah, oh, Tranio, what a cruel father he! But art thou not advised he took some care to get her cunning schoolmaster to instruct her? Ay, Mary, am I, sir, and not tis plotted? Oh, I have it, Tranio. Master, for my hand, both our inventions meet and jump in one. Uh, tell me thine first. You will be schoolmaster and undertake the teaching of the maid. That's your device. Mm, it is. It, it may be done. Not possible. For who shall bear your part and be in Padua here? Vicencio's son. Keep house and ply his book. Welcome his friends. Visit his countrymen and banquet them. Basta. Contenti. For I have it full. We have not yet been seen in any house, nor can we lie distinguished by our faces for man or master than it follows thus. Thou shalt be master, Tranio, in my stead. Keep house and port and servant as I should. I will some other be, some Florentine, some oh, ah, Neapolitan, or meaner man of Pisa. Tis hatched and shall be so. Tranio at once, uncase thee, Take my color, hat, and cloak. When Biandello comes, he waits on thee, but I will charm him first to keep his tongue. So at your need. In brief, sir, sith it's your pleasure is, and charge me at your party. Be serviceable to my son, quote he. Be serviceable to my son, quote he. <laughs> Although I think twas in another sense. I am content to be Lucencio, because so well I love this said Lucencio. Tranio, be so because Lucencio loves, and let me be a slave to achieve that maid, whose sudden sight hath thralled my wounded eye. <gasps> Here comes the rogue. Sirrah, where have you been? Where have I been? Nay, how yeah. now? Where are you? Master, has my fellow's Tranio stolen your clothes, or you stolen <laughs> it? Oh, 
What's the news? Sarah, uh, come hither. Tis no time to jest. And therefore, frame your manners to the time. Your fellow Tranio here, to save my life, puts my apparel and my countenance on, and I, for my escape, have put on his. For in a quarrel since I came ashore, I killed a man and fear I was described. Wait you on him, I charge you, as becomes while I make my way from hence to save my life. You understand me? No, sir. Narrow wit. Uh, and not a jolt of Tranio in your mouth. Tranio is changed into Lucentio. The better for him would I were so say to. So could I, faith boy, to have this the next wish after that Lucentio indeed has Baptista's youngest daughter. But, Sirrah, not for my sake. But your masters, I advise you use your manners discreetly in all kinds of companies where when I am alone, why, then I am Tranio. But in all places else, your master, Lucentio. Tranio, let's go. One thing more rest, that thyself execute to make one among these wars. If thou ask me why suffices my reasons are both good <laughs> and weighty. And we skip to scene two. Enter Petruchio. Verona, for a while I take my leave to see my friends in Padua, but of all my best beloved and approved friend, Hortensio. Nitro, this is his house. Here, Sirag Romeo, knock, I say. Knock, sir? Should I knock? Is there a man has abused your worship? Villain, I say knock me here soundly. Knock you here, sir? Why, sir? Why am I, sir, that I should knock you here, sir? Villain, I say knock me at this gate and wrap me well, or I'll knock your knave's pate. My master is grown quarrelsome. I should knock you first, and when I know who after who comes by the worst. Will it not be? Faith, sirrah, and you'll not knock, I'll ring it. I'll try how you can so far and sing it. Yeah, help, master, help. My master is mad. Now knock when I bid you, Srav, villain. Uh, how now? What's the matter, my old friend Grumio and my good friend Petruchio? How do you all at Verona? Signor Hortensio, come you depart the fray. Con tutto el cuore ben trovato, may I say? Alla nostra casa benvenuto, molto onorato, signor mio Petruccio. Rise, Grumio, rise. We will compound this quarrel. Nay, it is no matter, sir, what he ledges in Latin. If this were be not a lawful case for me to leave his service, look you, sir, he bids me knock him and wrap him soundly, sir. Well, it was fit for a servant to use his master's soul, being perhaps, for aught I see, two and thirty a pit out. More to God I had well knocked at first, then had not Grumio come by the worse. A senseless villain, good Hortensio. I bade the rascal knock upon your gate, and could not get him from my heart to do it. Knock at the gate? Oh, heavens, spake you not these words plain. Sirrah, knock me here, wrap me here, knock me well, knock me soundly, and you come now with knocking at the gate. Sirrah, be gone, or talk not, I advise you. <clears throat> Petruchio, patience, I am Grumio's pledge. What, this is a heavy chance twixt him and you, your ancient, trusty, pleasant servant, Grumio, and tell me... Then now, sweet friend, what happy gale blows you to Padua here from old Verona? Such wind as scatters young men through the world to seek their fortunes farther than at home, where some small experience grows. But in a few, Senor Hortensio, thus it stands with me. Antonio, my father, is deceased. I've thrust myself into this maze, happily to wive and thrive as best I may. Crowns in my purse I have in. Goods at home, and so I'm come abroad to see the world. Uh, Petruchio, shall I then come roundly to thee and wish thee to a shrewd, ill-favored wife? Thou wouldst thank me but a little for my counsel. And yet, 
I promise thee she shall be rich, oh, and very rich, but thou art too much my friend, and I'll not wish thee to her. Signor Hortensio, twixt such friends as we, few words suffice. And therefore, if thou know one rich enough to be Petruchio's wife, as wealth is burden of my young, of my wooing dance, but be she as foul as was Florentus's love, as old as Sybil and as cursed as shrewd as Socrates' Anthropy, or worse, she moves me not, or not removes at least, affection's edge in me, where she is rough as are the swelling Adriatic seas, I come to wive it wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then happily in Padua. Ah, hey. Nay, look you, sir, he tells you flatly what his mind is. Why, give him gold enough and marry him to a puppet or an aglet baby or an old trot with narrow tooth in her head, though she have as many diseases as two and fifty horses. Why, nothing comes amiss, so money comes with all. Petruchio, since we are stepped thus far in, I will continue that I broached in jest. I, I can, Petruchio, help thee to a wife. With wealth enough and young and beauteous, <laughs> brought up as best becomes a gentlewoman, uh, her only fault, and that is faults enough, is that she is intolerable, cursed, and shrewd, and forward, so beyond all measure, that were my state far worse than it is, I would not wed her for a mine of gold. Potencio, peace. Thou knowest not gold's effect. Tell me her father's name, and tis enough, for I will board her, though she chide as loud as thunder when the clouds in autumn crack. Her father is Baptista Minola, an affable and courteous gentleman. Her name is Katrina, Katharina Minola, renowned in Padua for her scolding tongue. I know her father, though I know not her. And, be, and he knew my deceased father well. I, I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her. Therefore, let me be thus bold with you to give you over at this first encounter, unless you will accompany me thither. I pray you, sir, let him go while the humor lasts. Oh, my word, and she knew him as well as I do. She would think scolding would do little good upon him and may perhaps call him half a score knaves or so. Why, that's nothing. And he begin once, he'll rail in his rope tricks. He'll tell you what, sir. And she stand him but a little. He will throw a figure in her face, so disfigure her with it that she will have no more eyes to see with all that a cat. You know him not, sir. Terry Petruchio, I must go with thee, for in Baptista's keep my treasure is. He hath a jewel of my life in hold. <laughs> her youngest daughter, beautiful Bianca, and her withholds from me and others more, suitors to her and rivals in my love, supposing it a thing impossible for those defects I have before rehearsed, that even Katharina will be wooed. Therefore, this order hath Baptista taken that none shall have access unto Bianca till Katharina the Cursed has got a husband. Katharina the Cursed? A title for a maid of all titles the worst. Now, shall my friend Petruchio do me grace and offer me disguised in sober robes to old Baptista as a schoolmaster, well seen in music, to instruct Bianca that so I may, by this device, at least have leave and leisure to make love to her and unsuspected court her by myself. No, by there's no knavery, see, to beguile the old folks, how the young folks lay their head together. Master, master, look about you. Who goes there, huh? Peace, Scorio. It is the rival of my love, Petruchio. Stand by a while. A proper stippling and an amorous. 
Well, very well. I have perused the note, and hark you, sir, I'll have them very uh, fairly bound. All books of love, see that any hand, and see you read no other lectures to her. You understand me? <laughs> Alvar, and besides, Signor Baptista's liberality, I'll admit it with a large largess, and uh, take your paper too, and let me have them very well perfumed, for she is the sweetest, and then perfume itself, and home ways they may go to. What, what do you read to her? Whatever I read to her, I'll plead for you. As for my patron, stand you so assured, as firmly as yourself were still in place. Yea, and perhaps with more successful words than you, unless you were a scholar, sir. Oh, this learning, what a thing it is. Oh, this woodcock, what an ass it is. Bisra. Romeo, mum. God save you, Signor Romeo. And you are very well met, Signor Hortensio. I'll tell you where, whither I am going. To Baptista Manola. And I promise to inquire carefully about a schoolmaster for the fair Bianca. And uh, by good fortune, I have lighted well on this young man. Uh, and uh, for learning and behavior and fit for her turn, well read in poetry. Uh, and other books, uh, good ones, I assure you. Uh, Tis well. And I have met a gentleman, have promised me to help me to another, a fine musician to instruct our mistress. So shall I no wit be behind in duty to fair Bianca, so beloved of me. So beloved of me, and may my deeds, deeds prove it. And that his bag shall prove. Uh, Romeo, tis now no time to vent our love. Listen to me. If you speak me fair, I tell you news indifferent, good for either. Here is a gentleman whom by chance I met, upon agreement from us to his liking, will undertake to woo cursed Katharina, yea, and to marry her, if her dowry please. All so said, so done, uh, is well. Uh, Hortensio, have you told her all her faults? I know she's an irksome brawling scold, if that be all, masters, I hear no harm. Ah, so say you so. <laughs> uh, what a countryman? Born in Verona, old Antonio's son. Huh? My father dead, my fortune lives for me, and I do hope good days and long to see. Ah, so, sir, uh, such a life with such a wife were strange. Uh, but if you uh, have a stomach uh, to it in God's name, and uh, you shall have me as... Uh, Assisting you in all, and will you woo this wild cat? Will I live? <laughs> will he woo her? Hey, or I'll hang her. <laughs> Why came I hither but to that intent? Think you a little din can daunt mine ears? Have I not in my time heard lions roar? Have I not heard the sea puffed up with winds, rage like an angry boar, chafed to sweat? Have I not heard great ordnance in the field and heaven's artillery thunder in the skies? Have I not in a pinched battle heard lured alarms, no, loud alarms, neighing steeds and trumpets clang? And do you tell me, do you tell me of a woman's tongue that gives not half so great a blow to hear as will a chestnut in a farmer's fire touch, 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 fear boys with bugs? For he is none. Hortensio, hark, this gentleman is happily arrived, and my man presumed for his own good and yours. I promised we would be contributors and bear his charging of wooing whatsoever. And so we will, <laughs> provided that he win her. I would I were as sure of a good 
dinner. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, God save you. If I may be bold, tell me, I beseech you, which is the readiest way to the house of Signor Baptista Manola? He that has two fair daughters. Tis he, you mean? Even he, Biandello. I feel, sir, you mean not to woo. Uh, perhaps him and her, sir, what have, what have you to do? Not her that chides, sir, at any hand, I pray. I love no chiders, sir. Biandello, let's away. Well begun, Tranio. Uh, sir, a word ere you go, are you a suitor to the maid you talk of? Yea or no? And if I be, sir, is it of any offense? No, if with any more words you will get you hence. Why, sir, I pray you are not the streets as free for me as for you. And so is not she. For what reason, I beseech you? For this reason, if you'll know that she's the choice love of Signor B. Grimio. <sighs> that she's the chosen of Signor Hortensio. Oh. Softly, my masters, if you be gentlemen, do me this right. Hear me with patience. Baptista is a noble gentleman, to whom my father is not all unknown. And were his daughter fairer than she is, she may more suitors have, and me for one. Fair lady's daughter had a thousand wooers, then well one more may, be, may fair Bianca have. And so she shall. Vicentio shall make one, though Paris came in hope to speed alone. What? This gentleman will all talk us all. <laughs> Sir, give him head. I know he'll prove a jade. Potencio, oh, to what end are all these words? Uh, sir, let me be so bold as ask you, did you yet ever see Baptista's daughter? No, sir, but here I do that he hath two. This one as famous for a scolding tongue as is the other for a beauteous modesty. Sir, sir, the first for me. Let her go by. Nay, leave that uh, labor to great Hercules, and let it be more than Alcides twelve. <laughs> sir, understand you this of me in sooth. The youngest daughter whom you hearken for, her father keeps from all access of suitors, and will not promise her to any man until the elder sister first be wed. The younger then is free and not before. If it be so, sir, then you are the man, must stead us all and me amongst the rest. And if you break the ice and do this feat, achieve the elder, set the younger free. For our excess, whose hap shall be to have her, will not so graceless be to be in great. Sir, you say well, and well you do to conceive. And since you do profess to be a suitor, you must, as we do, gratify this gentleman, to whom we all rest generally beholding. So I shall not be slack in sign whereof. Please, yet we may contrive, contrive this afternoon and quaff caruses to our mistress's health and do as adversaries do in law, strive mightily, but eat and drink as friends. No, oh, excellent motion. Fellows, let's be gone. Let's be gone. The motion's good indeed, and be it so. Petruchio, I shall be your benvenuto. Act two, scene one. Caterina and Bianca. Good sister, wrong me not, nor wrong yourself to make a bondsmaid and a slave of me. That I disdain. But for these other goods, unbind my hands. I'll pull them off myself. Yea, all my raiment to my petticoat, or what you will command me will I do. So while I know my duty to my elders. Of all thy suitors here, I charge thee tell. Whom thou lovest best, see thou dissemble not. Believe me, sister, of all the men alive, I never yet beheld that special face, which I could fancy more than any other. Minion, thou liest. Is it not Hortensio? If you affect him, sister, here I swear. I'll plead for you myself, but you shall have him. Oh, then be like your fancy riches more. You will have Grimio to keep you fair. 
Is it for him you do envy me so? Nay, then you jest, and now I well perceive you have but jested with me all this while. A pretty sister, Kate, untie my hands. If that be jest, then on the rest was so. Oh, it is. Ha, ha, ha. Well, uh, uh, now, dear fame, I uh, whence grows this insolence? Bianca, stand aside. Poor girl, she weeps. Oh, go ply thy needle and meddle not with her. Ah, uh, for shame, thou holding of a devilish spirit. Why dost thou do her wrong that ne'er wrong thee? Oh, why did she cross thee with a bitter word? Her silence flouts me, and I will be revenged. What in my sight? Oh, Bianca, get thee in. What? Will you not suffer me? Nay, now I see she is your treasure. She must have a husband. I must dance barefoot on her wedding day. And for your love to her, lead ape in hell. Talk not to me. I will go sit and weep till I can find occasion of revenge. Oh, was ever gentleman thus grieved as I? But who comes here? Oh. Graham, good morrow, neighbor Baptista. A good morrow, uh, neighbor Groomy, Grimio. <laughs> God save you, uh, gentlemen. <clears throat> and and you, good sir, pray, have you not a daughter called Katerina, fair and virtuous? I I, I have a, a a daughter, sir. <laughs> I called um, Katerina. Yes. Uh, go you too blunt. Go to it orderly. You wrong me, Signor Gremio. Give me leave. I, I am a gentleman of Verona, sir. And hearing of her beauty and her wit, her affability and bashful modesty, her wondrous qualities and mild behavior, I'm bold to show myself a forward guest within your house, to make mine eye the witness of that report which I so oft have heard. And for an entrance to my entertainment, I do present you with a man of mine. Cunning in music and the mathematics to instruct her fully in those sciences whereof I know she is not ignorant. Except of him, or else you do me wrong. His name is Lucio, born in Mantua. Oh, you are welcome, sir, and he for your good sake. But for my daughter, Katerina, this I know, she is not for your turn, and the more my grief. <laughs> I see you do not mean to part with her, or oh. else you'd like not of my company. Oh, mistake me not. I speak from what I find. Uh, whence are you, sir? Uh, what may I call your name? Petruchio is my name, and Antonio's son, man well known throughout all Italy. Oh, I know him well. You are welcome uh, for his sake. And saving your tail, Petruchio, I pray, and let us, like the poor petitioner, speak too. Bakari, you are too marvelous forward. Oh, oh pardon me, Signor Gremio. I, I would fain be doing. Oh, I doubt that not, sir. Uh, but you will cure, curse your wooing and neighbor. Uh, this is a gift very grateful, I am sure of it. Uh, to express the like kindness myself, uh, that hath been more kindly uh, beholding to you than any uh, will freely give to you uh, this young scholar. <laughs> And Lucentio, yeah. Uh, what have you long studying at Reims and cunning as in Greek and uh, Latin and other languages as the other in music and in mathematics? His name is Cambio. Uh, pray you accept his service. Oh, a thousand thanks, Senor Gremio. Welcome, good Cambio. Uh, but, gentle sir, methinks you walk like a stranger. 
Uh, may I be so bold to know the cause of your coming? Pardon me, sir, the boldness is mine own, that being a stranger in this city here do make myself a suitor to your daughter. And to Bianca, fair and virtuous, nor is your firm resolve unknown to me. In the preferment of the eldest sister, this liberty is all that I request, that upon knowledge of my parentage, I may have welcome amongst the rest you that woo, and free access and favor as the rest. And toward the education of your daughters, I here bestow a simple instrument, and this small packet of Greek and Latin books, if you accept them, then their worth is great. Lucentio is your name? Uh, whence, I pray? Uh, Pisa, sir. Son to Vicencio. Oh, a mighty man of Pisa, I, I report. I knew him well, and you are very welcome, sir. <clears throat> I take you the lute, and you the set of books, and you shall go see your pupils presently. Hola, within. Ah, uh, sirrah, 